Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Welcome to our session. This is Qi Hui Zhao from China Mobile and Sasha Kumar from Huawei. Um, ever since 2019, cloud native has become one of the hottest topic within telecommunication industries. Um, China Mobile as an operator has also done a lot of research and also participated in many SDOs and open source projects. So within today's session, we'll introduce you our lessons learned and thoughts on telco cloud native evolution and open source practice. So firstly, uh, let's look at the first part, uh, our thoughts on cloud native evolution. Uh, firstly, let's look at China Mobile's cloud native situations. Um, China Mobile has three types of cloud, e-cloud, IT cloud, and network cloud. E-cloud is our public cloud. It can provide general and standard cloud services to individual users, as well as some customized cloud solutions to the enterprise users. And also, this cloud carries some of CMCC's service platforms like the AI platform and the big data platform. The second cloud is IT cloud. It is a private cloud to carry CMCC's internal IT systems. For example, our customer service system, uh, charging system and email systems. The overall design of this cloud is based on the requirements of our IT applications. Uh, the third cloud is cloud, uh, network cloud. This is the most important cloud for us as an operator. It carries 4G, 5G network functions, value added network functions such as multimedia messaging services and some network function related management systems is also on this cloud. For example, the Mano EMS, mm, this cloud is also a private cloud that has strong telecom features. So uh, by looking at all the three clouds, as eCloud and IT cloud has less telco features, they go faster on cloud native evolution. Um, our eCloud is, is always providing the past services for applications, uh, containers, microservice uh, architectures are provided as the service of eCloud. Um, our IT Cloud has, has the past uh, platform and containerization rate of all the systems is very, very close to the 100%. But however, um, as the network cloud has very, very strong telco features, uh, the cloud native evolution rate of network cloud is much, much slower. Uh, so for today's topic, the cloud native evolution is, is mainly about this cloud. Oh. What happened? Okay. Um, here, let's have an overview of CMCC's network cloud. Uh, since 2018, CMCC has been establishing centralized network cloud in eight different districts in China. Our 5G core IMS EPC are running on this cloud. Uh, the cloud ratio of CMCC's network cloud is currently up to uh, 35%. And also, we, we are planning to build some edge clouds in each of our 31 provinces. Uh, the, the technical structure used by the network cloud is currently NFE plus SDN. And the uh, major infrastructures used right now is the virtual machines. And also, OpenStack is used to as the infrastructure management systems. Uh, the network functions are all with NAVs in deployed in virtual machines. Um, containers and microservice uh, network functions are now involved in the cloud, but they are currently wrapped within the virtual machines. So they're not manageable right now and also uh, even not uh, be able to be visible for us. Uh, so 
uh, and for the future, we'll gradually introduce some manageable and visible containers and CNFs in our network, uh, in our network cloud. So after introducing the basic infos of our network cloud, let's look at the motivation of, of the telco operators uh, evolved towards uh, cloud native. As the network cloud has been commercially deployed and stably running for more than three years, uh, the next thing come to our mind is that we should uh, do some optimization. And after seeing so many successful uh, cases of IT cloud native evolution, we think it is time for our telcos to use the cloud native uh, technologies and also some theories to optimize the natural cloud and improve its agility. So the first pro problem we think the cloud native may solve is to increase the service flexibility under some different uh, use cases. So currently the network functions are deployed as the normal architectures. Each uh, network function is a well-packaged uh, 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 package that are deployed in the cloud. Um, this makes it, uh, when we want to use it for different use cases, we would uh, only use one deployment with some different uh, configurations for, for those different use cases. But as we all know that the to be customer has very diverse requirements. It may cause, uh, if we continue to use this kind of deployment strategy, uh, it may cause inflexibility and some resource waste uh, in, in, in the future. So if we could design the network functions as microservices and those microservices, uh, if they support to be orchestrated under different use cases, uh, this will make it possible to design the customized um, private 5GC. So this is the first problem we think the cloud native may solve. Oh, oh sorry. And, and the second problem the cloud native may solve is about the resource usage rate. Um, as we all know that in many telecom situations and standards, we usually use very, very high level of redundancy to ensure the reliability. Um, the redundancy may exist at a uh, network function level, server level, resource pool level, and et cetera. But if we allow some light service downgrading using the containers to achieve stateless and multiple replicas of, of network function services, we may reduce resources that are redundantly, redundantly used and also um, as NFs are now usually designed with a uh, large size of uh, virtual machines, this may cause um, service resources are not, servers resources are not fully used. For example, uh, if a server usually has two, two physical CPUs and we deploy two virtual machines, uh, one is with uh, 20 vCPUs and the other one has the uh, 12 vCPUs, this would cause a waste of resources if the other, the another virtual machine needs 10 virtual vCPUs. Uh, but if we can design the network functions as microservices uh, with each microservices uh, cost a smaller piece of resources, then the utilization rate uh, might increase. And the third problem we think that the cloud native may solve is automate uh, the process of network function upgrading. Uh, here is an example of, of the traditional upgrading processes that are still being used by, by many operators. Uh, firstly, we would generate some requirements, then the vendors would uh, do the development, uh, and then we would receive a, a new version deployment package delivered by the uh, vendors. And we would do some manual testing of these upgraded network functions. And then we would select some, several commercial sites to do a trial deployment. If the feedback from the trial deployment are good, we would do some offline upgrade. 
the processes are mostly complex, um, widely influential, and also happened at night. Uh, this is definitely not automatic and should be upgraded. So these are some examples to explain why evolve towards cloud native is important to the telco operators. Uh, but as there are many special features telco industries has, uh, we, we, we cannot uh, simply copy those successful experience of IT cloud native evolution. We, we have to explore our own way. So here I listed several uh, features of network cloud that are different from traditional cloud computing. Firstly, uh, the network functions are our core applications. We don't have many other um, diverse uh, applications. And secondly, the network functions and cloud platforms of, of the telco operators are usually bought from the vendors. And we, we define the product requirement through standards, and we don't do the design and also the development. And the third feature is that uh, the products we bought are usually from multi-vendors. And the third feature is that we require high reliabilities, uh, which is usually up to 99.999%. Uh, and the, the other feature is that uh, the NFA architecture has been used for many years and is quite mature right now. So if we want to involve some new technologies, we have to considering about its influence on the uh, NFA architecture and also the, the, uh, the workflows. And also uh, in telecom um, environments, we have relatively solidified operation and management systems and the processes. So we have many things that are different from the IT uh, industries, but, uh, but here uh, we found some common features that can be shared between the IT systems uh, and also the telecom systems. The number one is microservices plus uh, satellites. These are about the uh, application design. And also we would have agile uh, infrastructure we would uh, uh, care about continuous delivery. And also we would require effective uh, operation and management. So by, by seeing all these um, features, the difference and the similarities, we have summarized three research points that worth uh, exploring. The first one is how to achieve a uh, network function microservice design and management because application is always the vital point and we have to always start from the application level. And the second research point is the capabilities of platform to support the cloud native network functions. So the platforms are the carriers of, of network functions. So obtaining every capabilities that the network function required is, is quite important. And the third point is how to adapt current management systems for the NAF management. Because, uh, uh, the mano, for example, the, the mano, mano systems, the mano workflows, and uh, the OSS uh, management systems, and things like that. So these are about the high level research point for network cloud to, to achieve cloud native. So, and it, this page shows the, what, what the uh, China Mobile has done uh, to explore the cloud native evolution. Um, we have been doing technical research on container microservice and paths uh, for containers we have worked out some technical architectures and done testing trials. Um, although our attitude on introducing containers to core is relatively uh, conservative, but a technical standard is ready for use and we have started using it on edge. And for microservice, uh, design and management is the topic. Uh, by, by looking at the network function design from many partners, uh, we have drawn the conclusion that uh, there's 
um, the whole standard on network function microservice design. But commonly, they still follow the structure of the physical network functions, which contains the load balancer module, some uh, business processing unit, uh, the OAM unit, and the data storage unit. Uh, but the developers are doing do do working on splitting these units into smaller pieces. Uh, for microservice management, um, we we don't have any solution for this now. Uh, but knowing whether to manage or not, what to manage, and how to manage microservice is the direction. And for PaaS, we have working on PaaS structure and capabilities in the network cloud. Um, how to involve PaaS and merge with the NFV structure uh, or even change it is one of the key questions we, we try to answer right now. And uh, what PaaS capabilities and corresponding use cases is another thing we are exploring. And this is happening in XDevelop project. Um, on the standard promotion part, our team has also done a lot. Uh, we have relatively mature technical standard and interface standard for container layers. These are enterprise uh, standard. And we have designed principles for cloud native applications in, in network cloud. And we, are, we plan to do a white paper for this topic and standards for cloud native maturity evolution for applications and technical standard for paths of telco network cloud are two standards that we started this year. And in ITU, we lead uh, one, one standard named functional requirements of paths for cloud native applications. And in Etsy, we're following uh, an FE EV uh, 019 report on the VNF uh, generic OAM functions because this is a important use case for for PaaS to implement uh, cloud native OAM functions. Um, on the open source practice, uh, we follow CNCF projects including Kubernetes and Knative, and also we start a new one named Xdevelop to explore platform capabilities required by the um, network cloud. Um, we, we have found that uh, cloud native is closely related to firsthand experience of network function design, development, and operation. So it requires us as an operator to engage in all these procedures and have internal look into the network function at code level. So uh, we think start from uh, open source practice is a good way. Uh, so that's all about my part. And then I'll hand over to Seshu to introduce XDevela, which is the most important uh, open source project we have been participating. Thanks, Shuhui, for the introduction. Uh, hi, guys, this is Seshu Kumar Mudiganti from Huawei. Uh, Technology India Private Limited, and I'll be covering about XGVela and how XGVela will be solving some of the problem statement which uh, Shikhu has actually explained before. To start with, XGVela is an open source Telco PaaS uh, pla platform. Uh, we know that PaaS has PaaS platforms are many in, in uh, the current uh, scenario, and we want to actually expose uh, what uh, the Telco needs of it as a specific uh, functionality. So XGVela is actually going to address all those issues which are there as a part of uh, uh, telecos problems, uh, the problems which will be uh, coming across in telecos world, and uh, uh, we'll be looking into how we are trying to solve them. To start with, XGVela is a project which started in April 2020. Uh, it got a sandbox. It has been uh, adopted a sandbox project with Leven in the 2021 January. Uh, currently, we have 13 TSC members uh, working on XGVela who have uh, been participating in XGVela in different uh, uh, functional aspects. Uh, the, if you see the architecture of XGVela, it mainly constitutes of extension to the PaaS platform. Uh, the general PaaS, as you see in the blue box here, uh, is, is the one which we are, all know. What XGVela scope is mainly the red dotted line and the red scope here. The key scope being the uh, solid red line here, which is actually constituting of two main parts. 
One is adaptation layer, which is an extension to the general pass itself, but adapts to the specific teleco needs, and then the functionality which has to be implemented as a teleco itself. I know it's a little confusing at the initial stage to see this entire stuff as a uh, building block. We'll be covering off it in details in the next slide. Uh, the other important aspect to understand here is uh, we also have uh, the interfaces to the general pass wherein, as and when necessary. That is what we are trying to depict from these blue lines, which are directly opening from the uh, uh, details which are there here. This is actually not, it is completely out of scope of current Jivada. Our mainly scope is to enhance this functionality here, which is teleco specific pass capabilities, mainly used by network functions and teleco management systems under the teleco scenario and adaptation layer to make sure that this teleco specific functionalities are adapting properly to the general pass and then the APIs around it. Uh, the upper bound, not bound for this will be again uh, any application. It could be third party hosted app. It could be any NF, uh, NF function which is uh, coming from any OSDT. Uh, sorry, it can be coming from any of the open source uh, definitions, open source uh, standardization bodies. And of course, we can also have integrations with other open sources also. So we are looking at all all the way in which we can do SDO integration as well as open source open source integration to this uh, pass platform, a telco pass platform, and also uh, leverage what is there as a part of general pass uh, uh, platform, which is there in the current scenario. Having said that, uh, this is what will illustrate further as to what what we spoke just now. Uh, as you see here, uh, they are. Uh, different functional areas which, which are already provided from PASS. Uh, these are not a elaborated list, but this is mostly the key aspects which we want to talk about. That includes issues, uh, that includes functionalities like telemetry, monitoring, logging, uh, the scope of it, all that. Uh, the other in, other aspects which uh, we also consider are uh, the service mesh, uh, the tracing, logging, uh, security and compliance and all that. What we try to build on top of this is the uh, teleco pass layer, which actually is talking about uh, the FMAS, the metric management, the fault, the configuration, uh, which are again looking at a teleco specific functional areas. The adaptation layer, which uh, is actually more like a glue between these two, uh, which includes some pro pro uh, protocol enhancements. It can be enhancements over the telemetry monitoring and all that, which we don't require to uh, use as it is. Maybe we require to fine tune as need, uh, on need basis, actually. So if you see uh, the past capabilities requirement are actually divided into three different categories. One, uh, wherein we require to implement NF functions. Uh, the other is past capabilities required to implement NF, uh, to manage the NF functions which are already there. That is what we are talking about here. And then the past component to expose, the past capabilities to expose NF services uh, to external customers. So these external customers we are talking about are these layers, which is actually coming as uh, part of the um, uh, this this uh, OSS PSS or ONAP or NFO sort of orchestration layer or the OSS PSS or the telemetry and I mean the metric uh, analytic layer and all that. Uh, the other uh, part which we have is this horizontal part which is going to be uh, useful for us in different aspects. We require to actually have uh, the catalog, the LCM part, the image repository, registry, all that. Uh, this is what will be our horizontal section. Uh, this diagram which is there is to illustrate different aspects of uh, where and what we will be using and what uh, we'll be uh, building on top of it. Uh, having said that, uh, the current seed code of uh, Exivela has been contributed by uh, Mevanir. Uh, it is coming from their MDCIL. Uh, the MDCIL is, is a, uh, most of us may be knowing it, that it is pretty uh, advanced um, uh, pass platform which has been provided by Mevanir and it is in production. Uh, some of the key features have been adopted from that from the, as a part of seed code. Uh, currently, we have the CMAS, the configuration management, which actually provides day zero, day one, and day two configurations for uh, the uh, teleco pass. The TMAS, which is basically topology management as a service, uh, which again is providing us uh, the MOS, 3GB PMOS, which is nothing but manage objects for NFs. Uh, the FMAS uh, is the fault management. This is what will be our key focus area to do as part of release one. Uh, the West Gateway, the CIM, and the Helm-based packaging framework. So as the name suggests, these all things are uh, supporting, they are support systems for us to work on. Uh, delivering of this uh, specific uh, functional areas is what we have as a part of release plan, release plan. Right now, we are focusing on FMAS as our top one priority. The others will be following uh, in, in the coming month. But uh, uh, I can say that FMAS, TMAS, and this end part of CMAS is what we are trying to deliver as a part of release one, FMAS being the top one priority. So uh, 
the way we want to do it is that uh, we will be building this general pass capabilities coming from OKD, the OpenShift uh, governance distribution, uh, which actually has most of this operator-based uh, implementation. Uh, the K8 is operator-based implementation is what they have used for that. The same will be extended uh, and integrated to this uh, specific functional areas which we have talked about. And together, we will be able to constitute the, uh, the functional uh, aspects of Telecos uh, specific standardizations. So we'll be considering the 3GPP, the TMF uh, standards also will be delivered. So this is what is our key work and roadmap uh, uh, just to crystallize and, and put it crisp. Uh, as I said, the OKRT operator-based enhancement is what we want to have. We are mainly looking at three major integration points as of now uh, from open source collaboration. Uh, one is the OKD part, which I just discussed. It will be the pass platform where on top of it's what we'll build that complete teleco functionality. The one-app integration is the critical part, which we are right now monitoring. Uh, the, as I said, um, we have two major aspects, the day one, day, uh, the day zero, day one, and also day two. So the monitoring part of it will be uh, integration to DCA, where we'll be actually having a best-based uh, 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 metric management, which will be exposed to DCA as a part of it. Uh, we'll be enhancing the telemetry part of uh, the DCA, which is what is a uh, uh, critical component from one app. The SO service orchestrator will be the one which will be used for us to actually have the LCM part uh, from the application deployment. The CNFO orchestration part of it is what we are looking at integration. The other integration which we are looking at and analyzing it as at the moment is an FEO, uh, which is a new project uh, which has been launched in um, uh, LFN, uh, again, coming from Google. So this also is, is actually having certain integration points which we are right now analyzing. We'll be getting back to you more with more details by H2 uh, this year. The CICD pipeline is actually in progress. Uh, we have almost finalized everything. Uh, the Argo CD being the most right candidate for us. We are also looking at other uh, aspects of um, uh, other, other functional areas which we can cover. Uh, again, this is some coming term, something which we want to extend as a part of um, uh, the k itself. I mean, we are looking at, again, uh, a, a CICD pipeline which can be adopted so that developers can actually do their uh, build environments and all, and it can be easy for them to adapt, uh, I mean, take the existing code and then uh, put in more uh, functional areas. The prototype uh, build is something which we are also working on, where XGYG fun uh, integration function, uh, functional integrations with general pass implementations and deploy and build a prototype. So this is one area where we are constantly working on taking the inputs from different operators. Uh, currently, CMCC is giving us a lot of uh, inputs from their uh, function areas. We are also uh, uh, taking inputs from other operators who are uh, uh, looking at XGYG from a distance right now, but we want uh, to have them collaborate in, in near future. The other important thing is, uh, as I said, the continuous teleco pass functionality and operation layer, where we want to give much more demonstrations to uh, uh, using the XGVLA. That's what we are trying to have it from H2 onwards, and then demos. So this demo right now, we are uh, having uh, the seed code, plus the OKD, plus ONF, the CNFs as to start with. Uh, again, I want to emphasize, we are not building a platform. We are not building a product here. We're building a platform which can uh, be used different uh, to have different use cases demonstrated and actually have the, uh, the, the functional areas verified. Um, with that, I want to actually give up um, the key information from HVLA uh, point of view. Uh, the conference uh, is where we have, uh, HVLA has its own GitHub, HVLA has its own wiki in, under the LFN. Um, the TSC meeting actually happens on every Tuesday, uh, 1 p.m. UTC. Uh, please do join us. Uh, the meeting uh, ID has been provided here. Uh, the, we have two different ways in which we can actually communicate with XGVLA if you have any questions or not. One is, of course, the mail chain. Uh, the other thing is uh, we have a Slack channel and then the WhatsApp group. Uh, again, the group details and all are, are provided in the wiki. Uh, the GitHub is where we actually have the initial discussions. Before we were part of uh, LF uh, networking, we were actually having the GitHub as, as even for documentation. So you will see both the code as well as the, uh, the initial discussions and all in GitHub. The mailing list, as I said, is in the, uh, as I said, may, uh, we have mainly XGVLA TSC, uh, where uh, uh, at the rate list.xgvla.org, where we'll be doing a major discussion about what we have to do and what is happening right now. It's pretty active. Uh, also, we have main.list.xgvla.org, where uh, we can actually take up uh, any other functional discussions which you want to have. So uh, with that, I conclude, uh, and I'll be opening the floor for any questions. Thank you.